Hello, hello, my friends. It is a stunning day in South Texas. It is absolutely gorgeous here in Corpus Christi. And today I intended on making a video all about the stunning 1995 Alfa Romeo 164 LS. But you might see there's no Alfa Romeo behind me. You're right, because it's gone. George is off enjoying it, as he should. In which case, I'm gonna improvise. I'm just gonna take you around the museum and talk a little bit about each of these cars. Most of them, I honestly, I grew up with them, detailing them, cleaning them, wax on, wax off, which is how I made a pretty penny while I was a teenager. Kind of missed that, it was like zen, you know what I mean? So, let's go ahead and do it. quick, you know, who I am. Well, my name's Caitlin. I have a YouTube that I make classic car videos about, and I kind of love it. You might be saying, well, why is this blonde girl making classic car videos? She looks like an idiot, blah, blah, blah. Well, looks can be deceiving. I grew up at our family mechanic shop that specializes in foreign and antique automotives. We've been in business for over 40 years. My dad's a mechanic, my brother's a mechanic. I have a 1976 912E project. That's right, and I also say Porsche instead of Porsche. Sue me, I don't care. That's how we say it in South Texas. It doesn't matter. But that's who I am. I'm kind of an automotive history enthusiast, and I have chased down a very large percentage of the car museums in the world. I love that. And uh, if you like that too, we're going to get along just fine. First one up to bat is the Apollo GT 5000. We actually have two Apollos in here. Oh, right over, let me do a quick turn. Boom, that's the Apollo number one, Apollo 35, uh, GT 3500. It's kind of rare because there's less than 40. 80 were ever actually made. I'm getting ahead of myself right now. But let's just go ahead and do that because that's how I talk. 80 of these were actually made by the International Motor Car Company, all right? Um, George Finley, our good friend, was part of the was on the original marketing sales team, and that explains kind of why we have two of them around here. It's pretty awesome. We'll get to that one too in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at the 5,000. It's nice. Now we have this lovely MGA. Now this MGA was actually gifted to my dad from one of our longtime customers. You see, we've had a mechanic shop for over 40 years and we treat our customers really right and I guess we treated this one really right. He was a really nice gentleman and um, this is a car that my dad says he'll never sell because you do not sell gifts. And uh, the MGA was pretty special, all right? Now this was the first, when, when you think about MG cars, and I'm not gonna go too far back into the history because I will do that and I will get exhausted, but the MGA was a serious design leap for MG cars. They were coming from MG TD, you know, the T-Series, and this was, the, they were also their first real attempt at being a little aerodynamic, right? Um, but yeah, it's a special car. It really is, it's, everybody loves an MGA. I mean, so, this is a 1985 Autocraft Mark IV Cobra, and it is a favorite of the family. My dad is, is and, or was, and is the first titled owner of this car. It drove my sister home on her wedding night, and uh, it's pretty 
darn special. I actually made a history video about all of it because it's pretty intriguing, um, the whole story, but why can't I remember the guy? It was Brian Anglis. A-N-G-L-I-S-S. -S. You can tell I just had it on the tip of my tongue. So Brian and uh, Carol Shelby actually had kind of like an ongoing feud regarding these continuation Cobras. Pretty funny. Brian something. Adcraft. Yeah. Uh, it's going to, I'm going to, it's going to bug the shoot out of me. Anyways. Um, how, they actually were able to use the AC name on these by going to the family and saying, hey, can we use it? And Autocrafters literally had the same men that made the original Cobra making these. So this is considered a continuation vehicle. It's not like a recreation or anything. It's a big deal. It's really nice. Let's take a look at it. funny um and not unusual by any means but i don't know where this other mga came from i don't know who owns this i don't know maybe this is a new purchase and nobody told me about it but pretty darn awesome <sighs> this, is a, this is a good life to live so i'm gonna enjoy taking a little look at this because this is the first time i've seen it wonder what other surprises are oh gosh oh that's nice it is nice in there. Let's take a little look. Oh, I love that. Oh. Oh, great. God, I hope this is something that was recently purchased and we're not just storing it for somebody. Oh, it is so, look at, it is so nice. Okay, let me show y'all. Let me show y'all a little, nice little peek. I'm going to need to make a drive video with this. All right. It's funny that I'm like, oh, la, 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 a brand new car. What? What? <laughs> took out and drove the 41 Chevy because usually it's the rump isn't facing you all right usually it's the other way around this is a pretty cool car I don't remember what year but it was like voted max truck you know like custom street rod of the year or something got a small block Chevy in there a lot of unique little um interior features let's go ahead and take a look at those right might as well and it has one of these cool little so under here let's see if i can get the where's the little man i was gonna look all cool but here i am not there's oh here darn it mother son of a it was right here the whole time i'm gonna edit it make it look like i'm just kidding i'm not gonna edit it because you know i don't really care so right here boom I didn't do that well enough. There we go. <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna show you the interior of this bad boy. Let's see. I'm not, I'm not the master videographer. Oh yeah. Oh, so okay. Let's switch this. Let's see. Here is this super special interior. This is kind of an interesting little little touch, paying homage to the. I think it was 1989. I don't know. That that year actually sticks in my head. To being the Mac Tools calendar winner. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> what color would you... Is this color... What would, what, is, what do we consider this color? I don't know. Oh, yeah, but this is one mean... Look at that. And then this is like a... It looks blue probably in the video, but it's actually a purple. It's like a purple faux ostrich. Or real, I don't really, maybe it's real ostrich. I have no idea. I'm not somebody that can tell real or fake from uh, as far as leather. 
from the other. Isn't that Nash? Yes, your Nash. Not a lot. Visibility is minimal, um, which you can expect in a street rod. Pretty sweet. All right, let's, I'll show you around the outside now. This was epic. This was Studebaker's like grabbing onto last straws, trying to save their corporation. So they made this super advanced rad. The actual name of it was like touring sedan sports car. I don't know. All right. Now the term that I was looking for that Studebaker deemed the Avanti was America's only four passenger high performance personal car. I made a video on the history of it. But they, you know, this is a, you can fit four folks in there. It's super fast. And I hope the guy that runs the Avanti Club is looking at this. I'm going to send it to him through Instagram. But, uh, yeah, the Avanti, super freaking cool. Unfortunately, and as some of you might already be thinking, it did not save Studebaker, sadly. Marketing kind of failed, but this car, phenomenal. Super cool. Seventy-eight, three hundred eight, GT four. It's actually a nineteen seventy-nine. I'm not too sure why I said nineteen seventy-eight. The car that really pissed off Pininfarina, because Ferrari went ahead and went with Bertone on this. Um, I love this. I love this Ferrari. I also so it's really one of those when they were phasing out the Dino. And they were kind of putting Ferrari badges on there. And then they were also keeping Dino and Ferrari badges. This is an example that actually has both. Okay, so you see the Ferrari Zipranzin uh, Pone right there. And then on the back, it has Dino on there. And Dino, um, many of you are probably familiar with, Alfredo Dino Ferrari was the son that passed away of um, Enzo's. Um, his only legitimate son not like that matters, a son's a son. But anyways, um, you can see the Dino right here. So Alfredo, and just to dip into history, because you know that's kind of my thing. So Alfredo Dino had been working on smaller engines because he saw that that was going to be the future. Pretty, pretty forward thinking guy. And so he was working on V8s and V6s to be put in cars. And Enzo was like, <laughs> we're not putting that in no. Da, 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 da. So when um, they decided to have smaller engine cars and uh, dip into a different type of market, they named it Dino after Alfredo. And Alfredo had actually already passed away. He had, um, what, did he, what did he, he had a debilitating disease that took his life at 24. I don't remember what it was. Sadly, it was muscular dystrophy that took Dino at such a young age. But I've made a history video on this. I'll put the link up right here. Um, pretty good. It's really interesting. Uh, it's always, to me, you know, there are some automotive figures and icons that passed away way too early. And you really wonder what they would have done if they hadn't been taken so soon. Sad. I'm going to cry. Anyways, on a better note, let's go ahead and uh, look around. We'll also look at the, in the interior. It's the leather in here is like, it's perfect. This was the last, this car, is doc this exact car right here is documented as being the last U.S. example of the 308 GT4 ever built. So fancy. We like scarcity, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You 
like a land yacht. A land yacht? A land yacht? A land yacht. A land yacht. It's kind of difficult to say, but... Oh, fantastic Lincoln right behind me. This is a special car in the Finley family. It was owned by a beloved matriarch, and so that's, that's one that is going to stay in that family. <laughs> Maserati. I have very fond memories as a teenager cleaning that interior. Oh, that is just, look at that. I will give you a closer look in a second, but the interior of that is just like, uh, it is timeless class and elegance. It really is. And it still looks bomb.com. I'd like to take just a little bit of credit because I spent a lot of days doing the old Lexol on here. Uh, now this is a lovely Maserati Quattro Porte. I feel like it was 1984. It was 82. It was 1982. I'm just bombing on my years with this video. I made a video on it. I should remember the year better, but you know, this mind's full of little hamsters doing a dance. Um, what, and what I like about Maserati and the Maserati brothers that founded it is that they really didn't give and their, their, the essence of their history is that they didn't really give a shit about actually selling and making cars. They were just doing that so that they could afford to race. It was all about the race. And uh, that's kind of a, a favorite little piece of history that I like about the Maserati brand. I mean, it's not really like that anymore, but, but back then. if this is a 55 or a 56 Packard Caribbean. Are you somebody that says Caribbean? 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 I don't know. I say Car Caribbean? Caribbean. Now I don't even know which one I say. Anyways, this one's rare. It actually was uh, one of the few that had um, air conditioning for... Oh, my hand's getting tired. There we go. It actually had air conditioning. I feel like there was less than 500 of these made. This was before Packard went under. This was kind of one of their last ditch. I think before what Packard and Studebaker formed and they still didn't win. Still didn't, they didn't, still didn't survive. But uh, if you look at this, the tone is just, oh, it's fantastic. It's kind of this fantastic Sherbert kind of green and this darker... I'm not good at describing colors, but it's a really good, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good paint scheme right there. Let's take a look at it. Side note, the exterior paint scheme is also continued on the interior, and it's just the best. Look at that. Okay, let me flip this around. Isn't that just absolutely fantastic? I loves it. Just loves it. And here we have a lovely LaSalle right behind me. And if you're not familiar with a LaSalle, well, essentially it's a Cadillac and LaSalle clothing and its underpinnings and engine and everything else. Basically, the LaSalle was Cadillac trying to get into a bit of a lower price market and people were just like, well, why would we buy a Cadillac when we can buy a LaSalle, which is basically a Cadillac for cheaper? So the LaSalle didn't last for long. <laughs> but it's a really beautiful car and um, I think this is a 38. And I love these these little, they remind me of, uh, they're kind of, they're indicators so that the, the person that's driving knows exactly where their bulbous little bumpers are. But um, it reminds me of Harry Potter and the Snitch game, right? Can you see that? Pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. <laughs> I 
could hide like five bodies in that. <laughs> so this is the Cadillac El Dorado Brum. It is kind of a big deal. There were less than like 500 ever made. And then I forgot the number exactly. So this is a 59, I think. And not many made during that time. It's quite fancy. We actually had a crises moment. It comes when we thought we lost its decanter set. So these come, they're extra fancy and extra special. So it came with a uh, decanter set, which if, if you needed to buy one, if it didn't already come with your Cadillac or you didn't already have it or it lost somewhere, it's like 30 grand on eBay for Christ's sake. So I actually don't know how much it would cost. I just searched the internet and I couldn't find any. So maybe they're priceless. Just kidding. But if you know, uh, leave the comment down there. I'm curious how much they cost. Also, I could get better at not getting these really unflattering freeze frames, but they're kind of funny. So maybe I'll keep doing that. I just had a heart attack thinking about that. Anyways, we found it. Thank God. And it's still with it. But uh, I love the look, the aesthetics of this car is phenomenal. And while we're right here and I just noticed it, um, these are the little Dagmar bumpers. Oh, uh, why they got that name? Well, Dagmar was an actress that was especially curvy, all right? And uh, that was during that time period where the aesthetic was uh, those kind of crazy, weird-looking bras like that. And so that is why they are called the Dagmars. just forget and walk by the Seville. Ah, I made a history video on it and it's kind of interesting. You know, they almost called the Seville the Saint Maurice. And they also thought about calling it the Leland, which, you know, Leland, uh, Henry Leland created Cadillac before he would then go on to Lincoln. So it would have been really ironic if Cadillac had named the Seville, the Leland, because their major U.S. competitor in the luxury scene was Lincoln, who also was made by Leland. So they're probably happy. They've, they decided not to do that. But I would have loved it because I personally, I have like an old, weird car history crush on Henry Leland, and I can't help it. But this is, uh, when George got it, it had phenomenally like low miles, probably still does, frankly, and the, it was just, it's impeccable. Like, the interior is just, it looks like somebody put it in, like, a time capsule. Whew. It's a lovely car. Let's look at it. Now this. It's pretty awesome. This is a nice Ford F1 custom pickup. It actually, it had, so it had a total off-body restoration, and it was featured in the Peterson Museum, which, <laughs> that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> um, and you just, the wood accents, don't you just, uh, I just this, this is the kind of thing that just puts a smile on your face, you know what I mean? Um, it's awesome. It's got a, powered by a Ford V8, and just awesome. Let's take a look at it. in your midst is uh, always kind of a big deal to me. I can't help it, it's exciting. The first one ever made, and we actually took it from a major restoration job to what you see behind us, 
in a matter of months, uh, in a matter of months to prepare for the 2013, yeah, it was 2013, the 2013-50th anniversary of the Apollo. And we took three Apollos in total out, was it three? Yes, three Apollos in total off to the Concorso Italiano, and we had one hell of a time. Like, we, in fact, we transported six cars total, three Apollos, two Cadillac 38s, and then the Dino um, back there, the Ferrari 308 GT4. And it was amazing. It was really probably the best family vacation we've ever had. We didn't really take family vacations as a kid, so we saved it all up for that perfect one. I already kind of touched on the history of the Apollo, but uh, really beautiful car. And the essence of it, it was, it was supposed to be the American solution to the imports of the 1960s. The, all the sports cars that were being imported, this was going to solve it. Now, an issue that was a thing was that it was kind of hard to get your foreign imports, you know, it's kind of hard to get your imported sports car worked on. You couldn't just take it to your local corner store guy and be like, hey, take a look at this, you know what I mean? Uh, and not all of them were terribly reliable, so you were finding yourself stuck on the side of the road sometime. Now, how the Apollo was supposed to solve that was by having an Italian body, which the body was done by Intermechanica out of Turin, Italy. Intermechanica is now up in Canada doing primarily, um, I think, Speedster recreations or something. Anyways, doesn't matter. Good bad. I'm all, I digress. So anyways, Italian body done in Turin, and then put a Buick V8 in there. Wham, bam, you have the looks, but you also just easily take it into your local Buick dealership and get it worked on. Genius. Bloody genius. They just didn't sell it for enough. Love this. The 1921 Dodge, this is officially my mom's car. She saw it pull in the shop and she said, I must have that. And she's usually the discourager of car purchases, which is not a bad thing because sometimes you run out of place to put them. So, this 1921 Dodge Brothers. The Dodge Brothers, I just, my mind got flooded with all of the facts behind this car. So, um, at that time point, at that period in time, so the Dodge Brothers started off mainly creating, they were basic, like, they created supplies that bigger manufacturers purchased. They were known for such quality, and then they finally branched out and made, started making their own cars. So reliable. So reliable, in fact, that General S. Patent said, I will only take Dodge Brothers vehicles out on my expedition to Mexico. Now, the Mexico expedition was really just a hunt for Pancho Villa, and they were not successful initially. They did kill him eventually, but anyways, these are rad. And another one of my favorite Dodge Brothers facts. So Horace and John were like these redheaded badasses, uh, very smart, very clever. They really could be accredited for partially saving Ford Motor Company because they came in there with money and uh, owned like 10% of it for quite a bit of time. Henry Ford hated them. My arm's getting tired. I'm going to do that. Okay. So the Dodge Brothers, they were not really well liked in Detroit. They were kind of the bad boys. Now, fun fact, John and Horace, like I already said, they were kind of crazy wild and crazy which makes them very endearing to me but one of them got and I think it was John like I'm 95 my hands getting tired I'm 95% sure it was John that got in trouble for jumping a lawyer outside of a Detroit saloon with one of his friends they wild they're like millionaires billionaires and they're all getting into fisticuffs they're crazy <laughs> My friends, well, I hope you had fun walking around my little piece of paradise. I, uh, I really love it around here, and 
trust me, I know I was pretty fortunate to uh, be able to be around these in my teenage years and right now in my years. So, if you like this kind of stuff and you're okay with my goofy attitude, well, then you should press subscribe right there or right here, wherever the button is. And if you thought, if you saw, you're like, hey man, I really want a history video on one of these, write it down there. That's what the comment lines are for, okay? And uh, we will see you next time. Bye!